Hello and welcome to ERPWebTutor.com. In this series of videos, we are going to start talking about the Fusion Workforce Compensation Module. Now, let's first see what are the course objectives. So after completing this course, you should be able to identify the various steps involved in configuring a compensation plan in Fusion. Uh, explain how to configure budget and allocation sheets in Fusion, describe the budgeting and allocation functionality in Fusion Compensation, and also be able to describe the modeling functionality in Fusion. Now, workforce compensation in Fusion is basically um, the most used uh, module as a part of the Fusion Comp. It also has, as we have mentioned before, some other components like um, individual compensation, uh, the, the base pay, you know, but the workforce compensation is the probably the tool which is heavily used and is also uh, very popular these days uh, with a lot of clients. It uh, is an extremely flexible, very robust, is one of the more matured fusion product that uh, Oracle has. And this is one of the products which, which actually works really well uh, with most of the clients. So as we move forward, we're going to cover different topics which are uh, part of this. And also Oracle has tried to make this tool really simple now in terms of configuration. It is very scalable. It, it can be configured and tweaked uh, to achieve a lot of functionality. Okay, and then what managers love, uh, compensation managers love is the Excel functionalities. So with this new Fusion Compensation Worksheet tool, Oracle has nailed it. So it is very flexible and it is very close to uh, working in an Excel spreadsheet. So it gives you that kind of feeling. So that actually has increased the popularity of this product as well. So as we move forward, let's see what are the key features of workforce compensation. Now, it facilitates review cycles for global organizations for annual focused review circle cycle. So which means that uh, it is based on the calendar year. So annual focused, which means usually whatever is the, the calendar year or whatever is the fiscal year for the company. OK, and also the anniversary based review cycle. So some companies do their performance cycle based on the employees work anniversary. So it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, it will, the review process will happen after a year of the employees joining and then it goes on for every anniversary. Uh, the other features uh, allocate multiple types of compensation. So what it means is that within the same plan, within the same workforce compensation, you can handle uh, different types, which is like a salary increase is one type of compensation. Uh, you can do bonus, you know, there can be multiple types of bonus. One is, you know, just performance bonus. One can be discretionary bonus. You can have a uh, special sales bonus. Uh, you can have stock options. So a lot of different types of compensations can be handled within the workforce compensation module. Uh, manage budgets at the manager level or at the worker level. So let's try to understand in brief what it means. So when we say that managing budgets at the manager level, that means that the manager has some money which the manager can use to allocate between the workers that report to that manager or if there are any lower level managers, assign a, assign a pool for that lower level manager as well. So manager controls the budget. So it, he has the budget and distributes among the his direct reports and also the lower level managers. Versus the worker level budget means manager does not have a pool. It is more at the worker level. So an example can be, let's say your organization has a strict policy of uh, the merit increase based on your performance rating. So if you get, say, let's say one through five, one being the lowest and five being the best. So if you get a one, you get a one percent raise. If you get a two, a two percent and so on until you get a five percent raise for a rating five. So that is more of a worker level budgeting because in that scenario, 
the manager does not really need a budget to manage and distribute amongst the workers. It is more driven by some other factors. So that is the worker level budgeting. Next is create models to automatically determine worker allocations, budgets, amounts and targets. Okay, so what that means is that as a higher level manager, you can use models. So what that will do is you can create, uh, let's say you have, you want to find out how much total money is going to be needed. So let's say you decide, just like the example I gave you. So one rating gives you a 1% increase in salary. Five rating gives you a 5% increase in salary, okay? So you can use a model which will say, okay, 1% rating gives you whatever increase. Again, another scenario can be, let's say all the executives this year, you know, you're going to target, let's say a max of 5% um, salary increase, uh, let's say, or versus a manager or non-managerial level, they might get a 10% salary increase this year. So that is something a model. So what it allows you to do is when you do that, you will get an idea that how much of a budget you need in order to fund the compensation plan. The next feature is the viewing of performance ratings or rating the performance. So again, we will talk about that when we go into the worksheet and configuration of the plan configuration. Uh, basically what it says is that you can view and rate. So viewing means when you have the, the fusion performance management module, you can get the ratings that are assigned in the fusion performance management module, or you can use compensation module itself to rate employees performance. Uh, promote workers. So what it will do is you can use the plan, the worksheet, the managers can use that worksheet, the compensation worksheet or um, workforce com compensation worksheet to determine who they're going to promote. Okay. Not only they will get salary increase, somebody can be promoted to the next level or to the next job. So the worksheet can be used for that purpose as well. Review and approve work of lower level managers. So as a higher level manager, you can see that what kind of you know com recommendations or compensation allocations the lower level managers are doing and you can approve their work as well. Analyze allocations using online reports. So there are reporting tools that were that's a very nice uh, reporting feature that already comes with the product. Apart from that, you can use more, you know, OTBI reports to build, you know, customer specific needs as well. And you can also generate the compensation change statements. So compensation change statements are basically a summary of somebody's compensation change, which you want to, which you want your managers to distribute to their employees. So you can use that as well. Again, all of these we're going to see in more further details as we move to the different plan configuration. So moving forward, so what are the key decision points? Who all are eligible for the plan? So you need to, when you are uh, going in as a functional consultant, there are certain questions that you need to ask. You know, you need to have a um, certain understanding and a certain experience that will allow you to ask these kind of questions so that you can come up with a better design, a better solution, okay? So who all are eligible? So this is one of the key questions that you want to ask the client when you when you go in for your comp implementations. How many plans are required? So that is kind of a decision point, but you come up to that decision based on your requirements. You know, what are the different components that are being paid out? How many countries are involved? Do we have any mutually exclusive cases that is forcing me to have multiple plans? Okay, so there are so many factors that will determine how many plans are required. But again, this is a key decision point. Who have who should have access to setups, administrator, and worksheet pages? Okay, we will talk about that in details as we move forward. But again, what kind of access level the client wants? Okay, some client might say that, okay, I want to have a comp admin, an overall global comp admin who is going to be responsible for maintaining all, all the comp plans versus some other client might say, oh, I have my country specific comp plan. I, I don't want my comp admin in the US to view the data and configurations for the comp admin in the UK. So you have to decide what kind of roles, 
how you're going to access and restrict the setups and worksheet pages okay what compensation components are being awarded so we already talked about that how many different components are we talking about salary increase bonuses stock options uh, how does the reporting hierarchy look like so what kind of reporting structure they have whether it's a normal employee supervisor hierarchy or they have a different kind of hierarchy okay what are the key plan cycle dates okay, again this is a very important uh, question that you need to ask your client so when does the plan cycle start so what is overall whether it's a yearly so if it is yearly it can be starts from january 1st and ends on december 31st okay when do you allow the, the managers to have access to the worksheet when do you want uh, the cutoff for an employee to be eligible so all that kind of questions okay so those will drive your key plan cycle dates how does the worksheet look like again this is probably the biggest and the most important question and is probably the area which drives most of the work that you will do okay a, a lot of work has to be done uh, to make the worksheet appealing and user friendly for client you know clients have different perception about on the worksheets okay some wants to have some want to have a lot of information on the worksheet some want their worksheet to be very limited want they only want to see what you know are relevant versus some other company might you know need a lot of more information on the worksheet so it is very important that you find out what really they are looking for okay so uh, that is a very important aspect how the worksheet is going to look like now do you want to use performance rating in comp plans if so whether you want to award performance rating in comp module or import from fusion okay if at all the first question is if at all you need performance rating in compensation plans do you really need that is your salary increase driven by the comp the ratings okay if so then do you have other fusion modules if you have performance then you have okay do you want to use the ratings from from performance if you have performance if your client has performance the answer is most likely going to be yes that that's the reason why they have performance module right so you're probably going to use the rating from the performance module some other clients might not have the performance module and they might use fusion comp itself to capture the performance rating okay so again that's a decision point what kind of budgeting will be used okay we already mentioned about the different options of budgeting whether they want their managers to have a pool or they just want at the worker level okay so what kind of budgeting what kind of modeling will be used if at all they're going to use modeling okay so all those questions has to be raised okay. what kind of approval process is required so when the manager completes the worksheet and submits what kind of approval rule whether it's going to go to just one level supervisor as it's going to go to one two level supervisor or it's going to go to a completely different route supervisor and let's say the comp the corporate comp the vp of corporate compensation who is not in the supervisory hierarchy so what kind of approval process is required okay so that's again a very important question now how to communicate awards and promotions to the work to the workers so which is basically asking what kind of comp statements you need so if at all a lot of companies they don't even you know generate comp statement and provide to their employees um, maybe the managers just email them about their increase um, so that's a, that's the question that you need to ask the client if they have a comp statement then you probably have to build the comp statement as per their standards if they don't then you know this configuration remains outside of fusion comp okay so moving forward so these are some of the prerequisite configurations uh, so we are going to show you how to create a plan in a, a workforce compensation plan now some of the dependent objects that you will need when you are trying to create a comp plan are the eligibility profiles elements and fast formulas okay now again eligibility profile is almost certain that you're going to need it elements of course you're going to need it if you are especially if you are posting it back to uh, fusion or any other i mean if you are if if your data resides in fusion and 
uh, it's going to need some some elements at least okay so if you whatever components you have salary you're going to have bonuses so all that are going to be stored in elements okay and then fast formulas okay fast formulas again these are not mandatory the fast formulas you you it is not a, a mandatory configuration but in rarely you will find places where you are able to achieve everything by configuration and not having use not to have used fast formula so you will definitely end up having fast formulas okay now with fusion uh, with the whole cloud model you do not have access to the database so the fast formulas has also evolved a lot i don't want to talk you know much about fast formulas uh, as a part of this session but again just to give you an idea uh, whatever custom or pl sql or you know formula functions that you used to think of if you are coming from an ebs background all of that is gone you have to achieve everything in a fast formula and as a result of that the fast formula has evolved as well okay so keep in mind that you might need a lot of fast formulas in certain cases and if you are not technical enough you might need the technical expertise from another team to help you write the fast formulas okay so now let's talk about the workers compensation roles so there are two major roles here so one is the comp administrator and the other one is the compensation manager okay now the compensation administrator as the term says is is going to administer the plan okay it's going to configure and maintain the compensation plans you can update as in comp admin you can update information you can run processes and review administration you can maintain currency rates especially if you have if you are using a plan for employees in multiple countries and you are enabling the currency switching so that the managers in that country can see the whatever they're doing the budgeting and everything i mean not the high level budget but you know when they're giving some increases so they will be able to view it in the local currency so that currency exchange rates uh, all of that has to be maintained okay uh, run processes to initiate a compensation cycle transfer data to the hr system and refresh hr data reports now uh, as a comp admin you have to start the compensation cycle once you build the plan it has to start and what it does is you know it evaluates all the eligibility and it looks at all the configuration so that the managers can uh, whoever is eligible in the plan becomes added to the plan and managers can then view the the workforce their workforce information in the worksheet now after the plan is complete you need to transfer the data back to the hr system so that uh, work is also done by the comp admin and also the refresh hr data reports so you will have reports and then you might have to uh, certain cases you might have changes happening on the hr data so what you need to do is you need to get a refresh so this is not real time whatever data that comes into fusion compensation does not get refreshed you know automatically when changes are made um, on the on the hr side there's a refresh process that has to happen to bring in all the changes that has happened on the hr side okay even if you have you know um, not a coexistence even if you have you know fusion uh, core hcm in place you still have to uh, run the refresh to see all the changes that has happened on the hr side so that's the role of the compensation administrator the compensation manager let's see what they can do so actually on the right hand side you can see here the workforce compensation uh, these are the links manage plans manage active plans manage active plans actually takes you to the screen for uh, maintaining the currency rates manage plans itself will take you to the plan where you can you know uh, manage the plan information uh, run batch processes which is running all the processes that we have mentioned and then we can configure some of the global settings now as a comp manager you can see on the right hand side uh, the list is very different so that is so you can act as a proxy we will talk about what proxy is you, know, you can administer workers you can which will basically allow you to you know pick the data for a particular worker and make any changes that you want 
Okay, so let's see what we have, what kind of functionality that you have as a compensation manager. Uh, manage worker data by changing assignment data for the current plan cycle. Okay, so assignment data, which is basically the administer workers, with, you can use that. Distribute initial budget, so you can have the, as a comp manager, you can proxy, since you can proxy in, you can use that adjust budget feature, and you can proxy in as the CEO or the top level of the company, and then, you know, build the budget. Uh, because in most cases, the CEO will probably going to be too busy, you know, getting into a, compensation tool is probably just going to sign off on the amount and somebody as the comp manager is going to do with the actual work by proxying in as the CEO. Okay. Now they can change budget and worksheet access so they can do that kind of work. Um, let's say <clears throat> you have targets. Uh, actually in one of my clients what happened is that the, the, the managers would assign the targets when the plan cycle opens and they would have a window to enter those targets again another place is you know when they have the performance rating they would give the performance rating and there could be some um, other bonuses that gets automatically calculated based on those um, uh, the performance ratings that the manager has given and they want to freeze that okay so what that will do is not allow the managers to change that information on the worksheet after a certain time so they can change as a comp manager you can go in and change that kind of access uh, to fields that managers will or will not have okay they can override line manager allocations job changes and performance ratings okay so they can do all of that analyze plan results using administrative reports so we will see this part when we talk about the administrative reports there are some additional reports uh, they can create models for use by line managers or by administrators to distribute compensation directly to workers. So they can also create models. Okay. Okay. So moving on, uh, the next role is the line manager. The line managers can allocate one or more types of compensation manually or automatically for groups of workers on a focal anniversary or periodic basis. Okay, you can see here on the navigator, they will have a link called workforce compensation. When they click on that, it will take them to the screen called compensate workforce. And using this link, they will be able to view the, the employees that report to them and also the managers that they that report to them okay and then you can see here whether the plan access is up update allowed which means that they can modify information so all of that nice stuff that the line managers can do they can approve allocations of lower level managers okay they can promote and rate worker performance because all of that is actually a, a feature of the worksheet and depending on what kind of access level that you have for the managers they can promote and rate workers if you have enabled the promotion feature in the worksheet. They can view the compensation history and they can run report to analyze the compensation cycles. Okay, So it's uh, very important that you know the, the reports for the managers are very different from the administrative reports. So the, the manager reports are more uh, data report in terms of you know the employees and you know, how many people they have uh, outside the say standard salary increase range more of you know data that they want to find out to give them you know to make them uh, better decisions on on their recommendations <clears throat> so last is the worker the worker can view the compensation details in my portrait so that's the last uh, role that you have the worker role okay <clears throat> so moving forward so we have this process flow for workers workforce compensation it's basically telling you at a high level what happens <clears throat> so the first is you're going to configure the workforce compensation plan so the administrator the comp administrator is going to set up the plan and then <clears throat> the load data from hr system of record so whether it's a fusion or whether it's outside the data needs to go into the plans which is through the by running the the process the start of compensation cycle <clears throat> Now the start compensation cycle is again done by the comp administrator. 
what that will do is that will um, create the worksheet that will assign all the eligible in employees into the appropriate plans. And then the next is a corporate review and analysis. So plan and determine budgets, targets, and defaults. So all of that <clears throat> is going to happen. So planning and budgeting is, to, is going to be done by the comp manager. Then the, after the budgets and everything are published, it's uh, the line manager who is going to allocate the compensation. <clears throat> Again, the line managers are going to approve the work of the lower level managers. And finally, at some point, uh, you will have the worksheet all the worksheet or the entire for the entire plan is going to be approved <clears throat> and finally uh, that approved plan is going to be transferred uh, approved compensation and promotions is going to be transferred to fusion hr whether you have fusion hr or whether you have some other modules you know some other source for your hr data so it's going to go back to that system and then finally, it's going to be communicate to workers, which is the statement. And then finally, the transfer approved data to HR system of record. So basically, this one is transfer approved compensation and promotions to Fusion HR. This is basically it only updates the data in the Fusion system. OK, so this is basically when you have even if you have a coexistence model, you still have to have a basic or you know, whatever you need that kind of HR configurations in Fusion, even though it is not being used as a system of record, but it has to go in there, okay? So let's say you give a salary increase, you give a new job, that has to go back to that system. And in some cases, um, it might not, which is probably where uh, your data directly goes into your third-party system, and then your um, interface is going to update the information in Fusion. So that could be a different option. So this transfer approved compensation in that case, you know, may not be relevant. So the transfer data to HR system of record and then HR system of record will feed back to Fusion. Okay, so that can be an option. Okay. <clears throat> so that's basically the process flow for the overall compensation cycle. So moving forward, uh, these are some of the the batch processes that we talked about previously that uh, the comp admin have to run. The first is the start workforce compensation cycle, uh, which build manager worksheets with eligible workers for a new plan and initiate the compensation cycle. Refresh workforce compensation data, which basically synchronizes the workforce compensation data with HR data. Like we said, the HR data changes do not reflect real time. So you have to run this refresh workforce compensation data to get all the changes that has happened in the HR side. Transfer workforce compensation data to HR is basically posts all the changes that has happened on the, the workforce compensation side. So, okay, so it sends all the assignment changes and it also posts the salary changes or any other um, bonuses or any other elements that gets you know entered in the compensation side. So all those gets entered in the HR side as well. A back out workforce compensation data is basically a reverse of the start process. We first we talked about the start process which evaluates and builds the worksheets which means it assigns people to the plans based on their eligibility. This one actually backs out everybody so the plan becomes empty. So this is something that you might need if you have you know encountered some issues uh, especially in terms of configurations. Uh, you're probably going to do this uh, before the plan access start dates, before the, the managers actually start, you know, uh, performing their stuff on the worksheet. So that is when you don't want to back out because managers might have already made some entries on the worksheet and you don't want to lose that data. Because when you back out, it loses everything, uh, almost everything. You know, some of the modelings might be there. We will talk about it later. But basically, this is what you do something if you find that something is wrong with the configurations. Okay. Last is the purge workforce compensation data. So remove unneeded transaction data from prior plan cycles. So plan cycles is like, you know, year by year when you first implement Fusion Comp, you know, you put, let's say for 2014 cycle, and then the next year you're gonna 
do the compensation for 2015 and then in 2016 you decide that you don't need any data for 2014 so you can purge the data whatever was entered uh, in 2014 this is because you will probably not need them a lot of clients who want to keep the data for at least a year what to see what they have done in the last year uh, but again it's purely a client's choice this is not something that you're going to run or schedule uh, this is purely uh, driven by need if the clients need or if you know oracle recommends that you have to do something like this for some reasons only then you can do this okay so that's about the the batch processes moving forward so we're going to start actually building the the plan configuration okay so again these are some of the screenshots where you go in to manage plans you know and then then you create your annual whatever plan you want so under your workforce management and then you go to manage plans and then finally to the manage workforce plans okay so you're going to see it hands on when you go to the application so what that will do is once you just create the plan, it will create you this uh, guided task list. So this is very useful, especially that uh, there are so many configurations that you don't have to worry about uh, finding out the navigation, where to go, uh, especially in, you know, in, in EBS, you were, it was not this guided from the functional side. You had to you know, go into multiple places. Let's say you want to uh, you create the plan and then you have to go to a completely different place uh, navigate completely out of the plan to go for eligibility and that kind of stuff but here it's very well guided so you win once you configure the plans you just you know that the next step I need to do is to configure the plan eligibility the next I'm going to do the plan cycle so it's very well guided okay so that's a very useful feature so again we're going to see it when we go and create the plan so these are some of the key factors of the configure plan details so again uh, the display order order in which you plan you want the plan to appear so we will skip this part for now this is good for your learning so we have configure plan details this is basically uh, after you create the plan this is your first step you go back to that step configure plan details and you will see a lot of information here okay so step two is the configure plan eligibility so before we start doing this at least uh, let's take a moment to go to the application and let's see uh, some of these steps that we have mentioned you know the difference between the comp admin and uh, how the screen looks like for the comp admin and, and stuff like that okay so let's go to the application so I'm here in the application. I'm actually logged in as an employee who has the comp admin role. So this is the, the welcome page from here. In order to access that particular page, you're going to click on the navigator. Again, this is release nine. You might have a slightly different navigation path, but once you click on compensation, it's going to look the same. So you will see a link for compensation. So once you're in this compensation, place you will see on the left hand side based on the roles that you have you will see different kinds of links so we have previously mentioned about so in one of the slides let's go back to the slides here uh, what are the different okay let's take a look at this slide so you can see as a comp admin you have manage plans manage active plans batch process global settings uh, actors proxy so these are for the comp manager so let's now compare this with the what we are seeing here now you can see here for this particular employee I'm seeing the proxy administer workers manage plan so basically I'm seeing both the reason I'm seeing both is because this employee has both the comp manager and the comp administrator role okay once when that happens I mean that could be the case you can have the comp manager who is also responsible for me as as the admin so when that happens, you will see that they will have multiple roles, which will give them more access or links to more areas of the fusion compensation module. So we showed you the run batch processes. Okay, we also mentioned about uh, managing plans. They can manage plans, um, administrative reports. We mentioned about that. 
So let's see the, the batch processes, what we have. Um, we have already mentioned about the five processes that we have. So this is basically how you go into the application and run. So you go to your compensation and then workforce compensation, run batch processes, and then you can run each of these processes. So these are basically concurrent processes. So let's say I just pick run the first one just to show you, you know, how the process looks like. So this is basically a, comp a, a concurrent request if um, you're coming from EBS. So it is basically, um, it's gonna start a particular compensation plan for a particular cycle. So you can choose the plan. Okay, you can, once you choose the plan, if there are multiple cycles defined, you can choose the cycle. And then depending on what you want, you know, this is, this is a trial run. That means you're not, you're just running as a trial to see if, if anything fails before you actually do the actual run, okay? Now the next step is the, you can also run this for certain filters. Let's say you, this plan belongs to uh, employees in multiple countries, just hypothetically, okay? Most likely you're gonna have, um, unless the, you know, the, the dates and everything are the same, the components are the same, it's unlikely that you will have the same plan used in two different countries, okay? So you might want to run this by country. The only case what I can think of is, you know, you might have the same plan being used by, you know, in two countries is probably, you know, so in some cases there are people who are, just a handful of people who are in a different country, uh, but that's only for that group of populations. They're probably, let's say you have your IT support sitting somewhere in Scotland, okay? So then they can be a part of the, the regular plan, uh, but let's say from the entire Scotland office, you only have those 15, 20 people who are IT support are actually being picked up by the plan. I mean, these are just examples. You know. So then you can actually run it by country. So you, if you do not want them to be included you do, and you are located in the US, you can only do it for the US. And in those cases, those people will be excluded. Then you can also run it by the legal employee business unit. You also have a person selection formula. So if you want, if it's none of these criteria is what you want, you can actually write a formula to pick some individuals. So a lot of people, what they will do is that they might exclude certain expats, you know, certain top level, uh, let's say the CEO and that kind of level, they, you might want to, you know, uh, only for them, just, for them, you can include that, okay? Uh, then department benefits group, individual person, you can also do it by a hierarchy as well. And then you can see include recently terminated workers. By default, the terminated workers are not included. If you want, you can check this checkbox. So then once you enter all the criteria, you just submit, okay? All the, most of the, the processes are very similar. Okay, so run batch process. So this is the refresh. And this is the one that I talked about when something happens in on the HCM side, then you want to run this refresh to see, to reflect the changes. So same thing, you're going to select the plan. You can select the cycle, refresh date. So you have multiple options here, actual run process date, which is basically the, the date you're running it from, the plan cycle dates, which are already stored in the plan. And then you can also specify a date for which you want to bring the, you know, refresh. So let's say you want to bring all the changes as of the end of last month. So in that case, you don't, you specify that date. So any changes after that will not come over. And same thing that you can use the population filters. You can use the person selection formula here. This is the only option you can see. And then you have different options. You have full refresh, which brings in everything. And some of these ideas and some of these terms will be more clear when we define the plan. But just to show you, you know, just refresh HR data only, full refresh base and eligible salary, which will only change uh, the base and eligible salary. So you, if you select full refresh, it will actually refresh, uh, select all the columns, all the options here, as you can see here, all the check boxes got checked. You can also check the active plan data. But if you do not want the full refresh and you want a specific refresh, so just let's say you only want the base salary, somebody, you know, there was a mass salary update 
and you only want to refresh the base salary. Depending upon your primary selection, you can see here some of these gets automatically selected. These are actually configured in the plans, the dynamic columns. Uh, these are some calculated columns, basically dynamic columns. Any alerts that you can define on the worksheet. Again, um, it's too early to, to discuss about that. But again, as you can see here, you, can, you have different choices. And depending on what is your primary choice, which is on the top section, you can see some of the related and dependent objects will also get refreshed. Okay, so that's the the refresh process, and then you have the transfer. We already talked about that. It posts all the information uh, back to HR. This is run after your everything is done. Okay, you can see. You can say that. This is the plan, this is the cycle, and we actually this one actually have to go through the multiple process. So let's not spend time on this one now, because at some point, eventually, we will have to show it when we do the actual uh, administering of the worksheet as managers. We will make changes, and then at that point, you know, this will make more sense. Okay, so let's cancel. Uh, back out, we already mentioned about that. This is something that you might have to do, especially if you find something wrong after the plan is published. You know, if the plan is, or say some managers report something major, that is when you back out and fix all the issues, okay? Uh, purge means, we already mentioned that, you know, you can purge workforce compensation data from prior run cycles. So just go into the task for that. So let's say, Cycles to purge, um, cycle specific. So it will say that this is the plan. And right now, I think I don't have anything because it's the only one is uh, the 2015 plan. So, or say, let's say all cycles in date range. So it will prior, it will purge everything within certain date range as well. Okay. So we got a fair idea about the, the features that a comp administrator would have. Now, I'm not going to show you now the features of a comp manager apart from the links because that is what we're going to show after we create the plan. We're going to use our plan. Uh, we're going to show you first the plan and then show you what the comp managers would do once the plan gets created. Okay. So let's uh, move forward to the, let's see what we have in the sheet next. So next basically is going to start configuring the plan, okay? So let's go ahead and start configuring the plan. So we, as a part of this exercise, this video, we will just create the plan and then we will you know, stop the video and in the following videos, we will see each and every configurations that needs to be done as a part of the, the plan creation. So to create a plan, it's very simple. You just, you're already in your compensation area. Again, if you haven't followed that yet, under navigator, you see a compensation link, which will take you to this page. So once you come into compensation, you just go to manage plans. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want to save it. And then just click on create. And we can call it, say, demo annual compensation plan. Now, assuming that at this point, you know what are the different components that the clients need, what are the kind of, um, whether it's bonus only, who all are eligible. So that information you have already gathered. The, the beautiful thing about this module is that since it is so flexible, you can configure a lot of this even when you have certain uh, requirements not finalized okay so you can always go back and change just don't start the cycle okay because starting the cycle means you're letting uh, managers um, start making changes to the uh, to the sheet or to the to their worksheet so uh, until then you can still get you know final decisions on the on the eligibility so all that stuff you, you can still go on even after you create the plans okay and then finally, when we talk about the worksheet, we will see how that uh, can be changed um, even after the managers actually have access to that, okay? So very simple. 
just click on create just put a name and create and that's all so as you can see here when I did a create it generated it created a plan with demo annual compensation plan as you can see here and what it did it actually gave me a task list in a sequential order you know so you, some of the things you don't, don't necessarily have to be in a sequential order that it's not like you have to perform this task in order to go to this tasks um, a lot of the things can be done in different order but this is a good way to this is a logical way of configuring the plans that's why it is uh, ordered in that way so as you can see here you can go to task and enter the details so you have different areas one for foundation one for budgets so foundation has cover certain tasks budgets worksheets uh, models and reports and finally validation and processing okay so for each of these configuration you just need to go to task and do those configurations and once you do those you will see that the status which is now showing as not started as you can see just hovering over this icon once you make changes and save it that is going to you're going to see a green checkbox saying that the status is complete so what we're going to do is we're going to end the video at this point and in the next we're going to start working on the tasks related to the foundation so if you have any questions so far on this particular topic you know please feel free to post and we will definitely respond and uh, for more videos on fusion compensation please do visit us at www.erpwebtrader.com thanks for watching